that you didn't die in vain, that you died so they, that they might live, Lord God. You paid the price. You paid for them, Lord God. Your life belongs, their life belongs to you, Lord God. So all they have to do is come to you, Lord God, and get that purpose and get that anointing and get and get what they need, Lord God. These are things that I pray in your son Jesus' name. I want to just say thank you, Lord God. My personal thank you, Lord God, for keeping me in all of my hard-headedness, Lord God. For keeping me even though I don't deserve it, Lord God. Your mercies that, woo, that are new to me every morning, Lord God. There's nothing that I can do that deserves the way you love me, Lord God. There's nothing that I can do that deserves the way you comfort me and the way you hold me, Lord God. When no one else is there, there's nothing else that I can do, Lord God. So I thank you for being unconditional in my life. My God, for keeping me through abuse, Lord God. For keeping me through financial situations, Lord God. For keeping me through all these things, some things that I'm too ashamed to tell people I've gone through. You've kept me, Lord God. I should be crazy. My God. I should be crazy. I should have lost my mind. I've heard people tell me things that they've gone through that I've experienced the same thing in their own drugs, Lord God. They're alcoholics, Lord God. They're giving their lives away, Lord God. And that should be me, but you've kept me, my God, my God, my God. You kept me, my God. I know I dress nice and I speak well and I look put together, but sometimes I'm broken on the inside, Lord God. And I thank you for mending me, Lord God. I thank you for not letting my broken heart get me out there, Lord God. Get me too far to where you can't come and grab me, Lord God. Thank you for being the master of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being the master of our life, Lord God. You are so deserving of the highest praise. We sing hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Bless your name. These things we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. since I've been able to, to come and, and worship with my church family. Yes. So let's act like we know God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to give thanks. Yes. If everybody can stand, we're going to give thanks to God because he's again worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Oh, you're the 
shouting with him. Amen. Because if you ever been through, I always say this, if you don't go through nothing, you ain't going to be nothing. Amen. And every one of us has a struggle. Every one of us has a testimony. Everyone in here could say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Amen. Don't sit up here and act like I'm talking to nobody. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Where would I be? Amen. You ever you ever think about your life and re reminisce and think about how God brought you through? When you didn't think you were going to make it, Reggie talked about how he had these thoughts. Amen. All of us have been in the pit every now and then. Everybody been in a dungeon. 
Amen. Have you ever been down? I didn't know how you was going to get up. Amen. But God. Come on, Evangelist Burton. But God. But the God looked in and looked beyond your faults and saw your needs. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. I thank God for each and every one of you. We are out here on a Christmas. This is the Sunday before Christmas. And we're in beautiful sunny California. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. About 75 to 80 degrees out here in California. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. The folks in the East Coast know what I'm talking about. Amen. The ones who are slum, uh, shoveling snow right now know about it. Amen. But thank God you ain't had to get out no chains today. I'm talking about snow change, y'all. Amen. You ain't had to scrape off your uh, windshield. Y'all don't know what that's like. Amen. You ain't you didn't slip and almost fall and break your neck because you was walking with your groceries up to your front door. Amen. You got up this morning, shook it off, ain't even got on a jacket. Some of y'all ain't even got on a sweater. Amen. And you were in beautiful sunny California. I want you all to do me a favor. Somebody, amen. Everybody here. Spend some time in the sun today. Get get you a, even if you were locked up, if you watching this right now and you're on quarantine, walk outside your, your, your house and set up a chair and just get some of that vitamin C. Amen. Thank God for just a moment. Amen. Take about five or ten minutes and just soak it in. Amen. We don't we don't appreciate God enough. We don't, we don't, we don't appreciate God. Y'all ain't talking back to me. We don't appreciate God enough. We don't, we don't give God the glory. And you ought to be thanking God that you are beautiful, sunny California right now. That's a reason. You may not have a whole bunch of money. You may not have a whole lot to give to other folks. But I tell you what, this joy that we have. The world didn't give it, and the world cannot take it away, amen? I ain't got no money, but I got Jesus, and I got Jesus on the inside, and every now and then bubbling up on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life, amen? Y'all act like, like y'all don't have church today. I'm, I'm going to shout all over this place, amen? I'm so appreciative and grateful that God has kept us and kept us well during the holidays, every time I get, I go and get checked off and amen for my test and everything, and every time I get, get tested and they say negative, I'm like, yeah, thank God for that, amen, 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 and I've been prayerful, I've been prayerful for all of us, many of us going through many different things, we have people who are on a sick and shut-in, sometimes I go through the sick and shut-in, and it's just so many people who are down, who are hospitalized. For those that are quarantined, thank God that you are quarantined. Stay where you're at. Amen. Start to suffer through it. It's okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, first lady was, her, her, you know, I'll be ear hustling right now because she at home. Amen. She talking to a job and they, they, they were saying about the vaccine and they say, some of y'all, amen. We ain't telling you got to get the vaccine. Amen. But they said you can either have vaccine or morphine. I start busting up from the other room. <laughs> That was funny to me. I don't know about y'all, but that was funny to me. Amen. So we're going to be prayerful as we go through. The vaccine is available right now. We're prayerful. We're praying for our first uh, first responders, those that have to get out there. We have many first responders in our church, and, and they're going to get their shots first, and we're going to check them out and see how they make sure they still stand in. Amen. And as they stand there, you're looking good, and we're like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. All right. All right. I'm going to do what I came to do. Next week, I'm not preaching, by the way. I'm taking off next week. I, I, I told Reverend Hill, I've been preaching nonstop, but I want to have Reverend Hill. I want to hear from Reverend Hill next week. Is that all right? He's going to bring our last message of 2020. He's going to close us out on a strong note. Amen. And. We thank God for him, and you all continue to pray. I will be here. I ain't going. I ain't taking off. I'm just letting Reverend Hill preach. Amen. I'm going to be here shouting. I might get on a praise team next week. Who knows? Amen. There is a word. God bless you. I'm not long-winded. Amen to our guests. God bless you. From Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Hey. Pine Bluff, Arkansas. That, that's where my family from. I was telling her earlier. Amen. 
That's my daddy from Pine Bluff. I used to go down there every summer to go visit my big mama down in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Amen. And we thank God for you. All right. At this time, let me do what I came to do. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. I'm going to read a couple of verses from Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. I'm reading in the King James Version. And then I'm going to skip down to Luke chapter 2 and 10. I'm going to read 2, verses 11 and 12, also in the King James Version. This should be very familiar. This is a very familiar Christmas passage. It says this, Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. That's Isaiah. Now I'm going to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Good to see you, Samaj. You're looking like a grown man. Amen. Luke chapter 2, the 10th verse, it begins this way. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. Today, the child is born. The child is born. Amen. The child is born. Uh, there's a story of a little child that was left in the darkness after his mother had put him to bed All right. and turned out the light. This was said, I am I going to be left alone in the dark? The little child cried anxiously. The mother said, yes, dear, but you have God with you all the time. Quickly, the child says, yes, I know God is here, but I want to see someone who has a face. Amen. Did y'all get that? I know God is here, but I want to see someone who has a face. When Jesus was born as a child, God revealed his face. Oh, come on, somebody. Christmas season is all about appearance of God himself. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. 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 Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Amen. Himself. God appeared. This is what Christmas is all about. And so many times we get stuck into other stuff during the Christmas holiday. Right now, in the holidays, we're stuck on what's happening in the world. All right, all right, we're Lord. stuck on COVID-19. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. stuck on the fact we can't get out and shop the way we used to. My Lord, my Lord. We're, we're stuck on the fact that the economy is bad. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We're stuck on the fact everything that 45 is doing. We get all these things confused, but I stop by on my way to let you know that Jesus is the reason for the season. I wish I had somebody with me. So today I want to talk about what happened. What happened with the manifestation of the birth of this child? Number one, number one, the child came to fulfill God's promise. Everybody said God made a promise. And if God made a promise, he's going to keep his promise. 2 and 11 says of Luke, it says, Luke and 2 11, I read it, it says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. This is a promise. Amen. Uh, there's a song that says, what child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap sleeping, whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch are keeping. 
So bring him in since gold and myrrh. Come, peasant king, to own him. The king of kings salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the king. Right. Whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord. The babe, the son of Mary. The child was born. It was fulfillment of the promise. Jesus is called the Savior. Not an example or a teacher, but the Savior. All right, all right. Brothers and sisters, the Savior was born. The Messiah came into the world. This is a promise. See, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent an educator. Oh, yeah, I didn't get y'all. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent a scientist. I still ain't getting y'all. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent an economist. I still ain't getting y'all. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. If our, if our greatest need, amen, had been military, God would have sent a soldier. If our greatest need had been justice, God would have sent a judge. But brothers and sisters, our greatest need was forgiveness of our sins. Redemption was needed. So God sent a savior in Jesus Christ. The child, amen, a promise was born. Isaiah 7 and 14 says that the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Well, what is a sign, preacher? Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Dorlisa Emmanuel, which means God with us. God Emmanuel is the uh, uh, manifestation of the presence of God. And during the Christmas season, Emmanuel is with us. I don't have anybody with me today. Emmanuel was born in a stable. Emmanuel came to live among us. Emmanuel lives with us today. When you're going through what you're going through and you feel like you're going to lose it, don't worry about it. Emmanuel is with us. Didn't he say, I'll never leave you? No, forsake you. I will be with you always. God is bringing Emmanuel with us. His presence goes with us. His presence is with us right now. I don't know if y'all can feel him. The Bible says if we come together, touch it, and agree. He's in our midst. I don't know if anybody with me, but I feel Emmanuel today. I feel that the child that was born was here to come in the middle of my mess. In the middle of my, oh, come on, my madness. He's hovering over us right now. He's all through us right now. That's why you ain't dead right now, because Emmanuel is with us. He can take the broken pieces of your life and put you back together and make you stronger and better and bolder and wiser. Emmanuel is with us. Am I talking to anybody today? Anybody here's down? I need a little joy. All you got to do is ask Emmanuel to fill you up. He'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. He'll give you faith. He will help you fulfill your calling. Amen. That's what the child did today. Amen. Y'all, y'all making me work too hard today. I know I'm preaching better than y'all talk to. Amen. Maybe the people watching online gonna get it. Amen. The child came because it was a promise. But not only that, the child came to give us providence. Now, what this means is that God will provide. Providence means that when you don't have a way, God will provide and make a way. When you don't have means, God will come in and make it happen. Come on, I don't know if I'm with anybody here today. <laughs> see, see, we got to understand that he, he not only came to fulfill that promise, yeah, yeah. promise I'll be with you always, but he came to provide, to make a way out of no way. Y'all missing this. Listen, you, do you not know what had to happen? There was separation between God and mankind. When Adam sinned, it brought separation. What happened in the garden, Jasmine, is that God used to walk with men in the, in the cool of day. But because of sin, amen, God vacated and he left men. 
And there was a gap between humanity and God. But when Jesus came, this is making sense to anybody. He came to bridge the gap. He came to bring us back to God so we can have relationship with anybody want a relationship with God. Amen. Do you feel him walking with you? I feel him walking with me and talking with me and leading me and guiding me. And when I cannot make a way, he steps in and makes a way out of nowhere. I'm not talking to anybody today. So, so he came to provide. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, I read this earlier, for unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. What I'm trying to say is, when the child was born, he provided. God foretold that he would be coming over 800 years before he came. Uh -huh. That's why it says, for unto you a child is born. Yeah. It is coming. He has to provide and bring you back to God. Yeah. He provided peace. Uh -huh. Isaiah said that I will keep you in perfect peace, yeah. whose mind is stay on you. Right. Jesus came to give you peace of salvation. Yeah. He came to give you a peace of of security. Yeah. He came to give you a piece of supplication. Yeah. What he did, he came to provide for you. Yeah. He supplied food when you're hungry. He supplied, uh, wish I had somebody. He supplied a uh, 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 drink for the thirsty. He provided fish for the fishermen. He provided rest for the weary. He will come and provide a peace in your stormy situation. He will come and provide you a, 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 a way out of this mess that you're going through. He's able to cast out the demons that you're dealing with. He's able to raise the dead. He's able to feed multitudes. I said I ain't getting you. He will provide for you, I said. He'll make the lame walk. He'll make the blind see. He'll make the dumb talk. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He's still raising folks from the dead. I heard somebody talk about in the prison house. God is still in the prison house. God is still in the hospital. God still is, 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 is healing folks and redeeming folks. I said that he will provide for you. Watch this. Let me break this down because I ain't getting y'all the way you should be getting this. It says his name shall be wonderful. He shall be wonderful counselor. Amen. I don't know if anybody in here Need a counselor. On, I deal with folks every day yeah, yeah. that's going through marital issues. Oh, they call me. They call me and first lady. Right. They say, y'all been married for 37 years. I need some counsel. I don't know how I'm going to make it with this woman I'm married to. I don't know what I'm going to do with this crazy demon-possessed man that I'm sleeping next to. They call us for counseling. But I'm here to tell you, there is a great counselor that sits high and looks low, and he knows everything that you're going through. He speaks wisdom. He speaks authority. He speaks the truth. He comes to counsel you. He comes to teach you. You don't know how to live right. You don't know how to love right. You don't know how to walk right. You don't know how to talk right. But somebody say he's a wonderful counselor. He keeps me from doing wrong when I'm about to step into it. He shows me how to do right when I don't know how to do it. Because he's a wonderful counselor. Still ain't getting y'all. But not only that, I love to say every now and then that he's just wonderful. Oh, I don't know about you, but I call him wonderful. He was wonderful when he was in heaven. He was wonderful when he showed up in Bethlehem. He was wonderful when he walked the earth. He was wonderful when he healed the sick folks. He was wonderful when he dealt with men. He was wonderful when he went to the cross for your sins and mine. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, what a wonderful God. His name is wonderful. Wonderful. Still, I don't know if I'm getting y'all here, but I like to go on a little bit longer, Jackie. Not only a wonderful God, counselor, but he's an everlasting father. Somebody say 
be the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's everlasting. He has no beginning. He has no ending. He's the Father of all eternity. Somebody said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things were created by Him. And without Him, there was nothing. You gotta get out of here, Tracy. You gotta get out of here. I'm talking about the child that was born. See, the child that was born came to fulfill the promise. Came to provide a way out of nowhere. But lastly, he came because he had purpose. And I don't know if anybody in here understand what the purpose of God was. It says that in Matthew 1 and 21, and he shall bring forth a son, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sins. See, the purpose of Jesus coming was to actually die. He lived so he could die. He died so you won't have to die. He died so you may live. Anybody know that was his purpose? See, it was good. The shepherds told about him arriving. It was good. Everybody say he's going to be born. It was good. Mary gave birth to God's only begotten son. That was all good. But that wasn't the end of the story. He came so that you may have right to the tree of life. I don't know if I'm talking to the right folks. See, the child came to fulfill the purpose. I don't know if you've been there. God said, too many lambs are dying. Too many sheep are dying. Too many rams are dying. Too many turtle doves are dying. But when I come, I'm going to send my son to die once and for all. I don't need to cover sin no more. When I bring my son Jesus, he going to take away the sins of the world. That was his purpose. I don't know if y'all getting this today. And y'all sit down for a minute. I got to tell a story. Watch this. I got to tell a story. Y'all, I didn't tell a story. Y'all getting, y'all getting me too ahead of this. I don't want to go too fast. I, I need to tell this story. Uh, y'all, y'all do watch uh, uh, Story Time with Papa, right? Yes, sir. Y'all, y'all ain't watched it. I, I already checked out many viewers, y'all. Got you better get online. Story Time with Papa, with pa Papa Pastor, tell stories. Yes. Well, there's a story that took place a long time ago. Y'all can play for me. They're rude. <laughs> A Persian king And he was a wise king He loved his people The king wanted to know How his people live He wanted To know About their hardships So often the king would dress up in beggar's clothes and he went to dwell among the people. Well, one day he happened upon a poor man and they didn't know who the king was. So the poor man invited the king, who was disguised, to come and live with him. Well, the king came and he lived with the poor man for about a week. 
And every day, the king got up and began to have talk with the poor man. The king ate what the poor man ate. And the king drank what the poor man drank. And the king fellowship with the poor man every day the king and the poor man fellowship right. they had cheerful smiles and wonderful discussions and then after about a week Samaje, the king left the poor man he went back to his palace and he thought about his people. He said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to visit that poor man. But when I visit him, I'm going to let him know my identity. So this time, he didn't dress up like a poor man. He went in with his regalia. When he looked in, he saw the poor man. And the poor man said, Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, your highness. He says, Why are you at my door? And the king says, Well, I'm that poor beggar that spent a week with you. And he said, I was in disguise. But I'm here to let you know that I am the king of all the land. And the poor man looked at the king. And the poor man stared at the king. And the king started thinking that the poor man was going to ask for something from the king. He said, I know this poor man is going to ask me to do him a favor. But instead, the poor man said to the king, he says, king, you left your palace to come be with me. You left your glory to come be with me. You lived in the dark. You lived in this dreary place. Right with me. You ate what I ate. And you drank what I drank. You fellowship with me. For a long time. You left your highness. You left your glory. And you came. To share with me. I don't need. You to give me anything. Because you gave me. Way more. Than you gave everybody else. You gave me. Yourself. And I stopped by here. On my way to glory. To let you know. Jesus. May not give you riches. He may not give you wealth. But he gave you so much more. He gave. Himself for you. He gave. Thank God 
God for Jesus. He was pregnant as a baby. Thank God for Jesus. He went through terrible suffering for humanity. Thank God for Jesus. They had to move the baby to hide him from Pharaoh. Thank God for Jesus. Raised him in the sick of a town called Nazareth. Thank God for Jesus. Our father died. When he was very young, thank God for Jesus. Had no support from his family. Thank God for Jesus. Had no place to lay his head. Thank God for Jesus. Charged with insanity. Thank God for Jesus. Persecuted by the politicians. Thank God for Jesus. Lied on by the religious folks. Thank God for Jesus. Oppressed. Pushed down. Thank God for Jesus. Rejected. Hated. Opposed. Thank God for Jesus. Betrayed by his close friends. Thank God for Jesus. Brought in a box wow. Thank God for Jesus. Executed as a common criminal on the cross. Thank God for Jesus. But guess what? When he died, they put him in a burrow too. Stayed in that tomb. Friday. Stayed there Saturday. But early. Sunday morning. Got up out the grave. Thank God for Jesus. Anybody know Jesus? Say yes. Say yes. I thank God for that baby that was born. If that was weird, he was saying, oh, hold it up. The stars are brightly shining. I can hear the night of my Savior's birth. I don't know about you, but every day, I'm on my knees, and I hear the angel voice. Oh, night, divine. I'm getting ready to open the doors of the church. But on this Christmas season, I don't think there's a greater time to acknowledge you. year especially after all that God has brought you through I'm talking about you I'm talking about you out here
That's when we was acting stupid. Come on, somebody. That's what we often say, Sierra. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. Sometimes I don't take care of myself. Y'all feeling that gratefulness, that gratefulness. Y'all know I just graduated. A lot of people, they think it was right. I, I tell you what, I, I went to the school, me and my wife we went to school. <laughs> Took us a couple of years. Victoria, you know, Sam, you all know. Y'all was sitting there, Tracy, you all know, you all watching. When we went back to school, we didn't even know we could think. Come on, somebody, you know, if you ain't been in school a long time. I, we graduated from college in the 80s. I know the 1980s. Some of y'all weren't even born in the 80s. That's when we graduated from college. We went back to school and they had, I, I promise, Reggie, when I started school, I thought they were talking a foreign language. They said APA style. I was like, <laughs> say what? Your papers have to turn APA style. I'm like, I thought they was talking game style, some AP games. Oh, I'm like. But listen to this. We went to college to get our master's degrees. They start giving all the different listing of if you get this score, you get an A. If you get this score, you get a B. If you get this score, you get a C. If you get this score, you get a D. If you get a D out of here, you ain't getting no credit and everything like that. So we went in, we prayed, Jeanette. We got on the internet. We called up everybody we knew. We called up Vicky. We called up anybody. We called up Ebenezer, Vicky. We called up, uh, one time I had Devin trying to help me. Hey, Amen. Trying to figure it out. But watch this. We went to college. We took 11 courses. We never got anything lower than an A minus. Some of y'all ain't shouting because you ain't been to college. You know what I'm talking about. Never got anything lower. The lowest grade we got was an A minus. A minus? Y'all didn't know I was from Compton? A minus? Y'all didn't, y'all didn't see my transcript from Cal State Dominguez when I graduated? Thank Lord, eh? We walked out of there and some of y'all saw the graduation. We were upset because they didn't put our soup. We were, we were, we were not cum laude, not magna cum laude, Vicky, but summa cum laude. Y'all, y'all see some of y'all don't even know what that means, amen? We were up there with the 3.9 and above GPAs. I'm talking about there is no secret to what God can do. What he's done for others, what he's done for us. He can do for you, Lisa. He can do that for you, Sharonda. He can do that for you, Ashley. He can do that for you, Trishina. He can do, he did it for you, Reese. He did it for you. Amen. He did it for more reason he can do it for anybody. Amen. God keep on making a way. I want you to understand that whatever you're going through right now, there's nothing too hard for God. Listen, there's nothing too hard for God. Look at me. There's nothing too hard for God. I know you're hurting right now. Some, some of y'all are lonely. Some of you don't know how you're going to make it through. There's nothing too hard for God. I want to do something right now. We haven't been doing this since. Uh, you can stop if you like right now. But I want to pray over. Pastor, want to pray over you. Um,